Well, probably uh, the single aspect of his work that I think has, has real resonance with me, and that's his uh, study of colour, vision, uh, how we perceive colour as opposed to just the, 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 the nature of light. The reason why it resonates with me is, is I'm one of the people that happens to be colorblind and roughly 10% of, of males are, are, are colorblind and most of us are aware of it. We're told at school and it's, it seems a bit strange at the time. Uh, but Thomas Young was one of the first people to really think about what that meant. A contemporary of his, uh, John Dalton, was colorblind and was one of the first people to write about it. He really couldn't tell the difference between oranges and reds and yellows, but was very good at telling the difference between purples and blues. He thought that this was because the, the fluid in his eye, the vitreous humor, was colored. And so it filtered out some of the light. Now, Thomas Young couldn't accept this. He, as a physician, he knew that he'd never seen this uh, mentioned before. And it, it was one of the, the things that uh, got him thinking about how the eye works. Uh, combined with his understanding of what he and others had called the undulatory nature of light or the wave-like nature of light, he thought about how light actually interacts with the retina. So he proposed uh, the trichromatic theory of color vision, which is that, that, that our vision is based on the detection of three different ranges of the visual spectrum. So we, we have three sets of photoreceptors in our eyes, which we, we call cone cells now, uh, that detect different parts of the visual spectrum, roughly related to the short wavelengths, medium wavelengths, and long wavelengths, although there's quite a lot of overlap in these ranges. His, his proposition of that and his conclusion that in the case of somebody who's colorblind, uh, you have a deficiency in one or more of these sets of receptors, how to understand it. It wasn't until many years later, I think it was 1959, that uh, scientists in America were able to do experiments that actually proved he was right about these cone receptors. But I think it's fascinating. And, and, and what always fascinates me is that if you look very closely at a computer screen, it's easier to see on a, uh, something like a big plasma screen or an LED screen that's used at a rock concert or something. If you go up close and you look at this white area here, what you actually see is red, green and blue light sources. And from a distance, those red, green and blue light sources entering your eye and, and uh, stimulating the retina tell your brain that what you're looking at is a white light source, whereas actually it's not. It's three separate, very well filtered in some cases, um, uh, regions of the, of the visual spectrum. And that effect is something we depend on for you know, interaction with computers and our mobile phones and so on. And it's fundamental to our understanding. But being somebody who's colorblind, I see the world completely differently to, certainly to my wife, that's for sure, whenever I'm trying to pick a, 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 a shirt and tie combination. And it, it was always fascinating to me that, that color vision can separate people. And by understanding how we interpret color vision through ideas that were developed from Jung's ideas into what we now call the Jung Helmholtz theory of color vision, uh, because uh, uh, later on Hermann von Helmholtz um, took the theory a little bit further. We have a good understanding of what goes on, and from that we can uh, interpret color and um, how we all see the world.